Hi and welcome to C Programming. In today's lesson we're going to learn how to use built-in functions. These functions are located in libraries that we will include. In the same manner we use the printf and scanf functions that is located in the standard input and output library, we're going to use different other functions that's located in different um, libraries. So, let's go to CodeBlocks and do some random number generation using built-in libraries and functions. So first of all, we have our layout for the basic structure of a C program and we're going to create random numbers. Now, first things first. The question we need to ask ourselves, is it possible for a computer to generate a random number? Now, to ask any human being to give a random number between 1 and 10, it's quite obvious that we will be able to generate that random number. Because we as human beings take a lot of input and a lot of things in the back of our mind, we do certain things and our mind do certain processes. And if such a question is asked, we can generate a random number. Now, a computer, in the other hand, is not an intel intelligent being. A computer can't create from its own. Let's say a human can paint the Mona Lisa. You can't ask a computer to do the same thing and call it art. A computer can only do what it's been told to do. And in the same way, random generation for a human being is very different in comparison to a computer. So, how will a computer generate random numbers if it can't produce something from its own? So, let's quickly have a look. First of all, inside our program, we are going to include a library called Standard Library. Stdlib.h. Now inside stdlib.h there's numerous functions and one of those functions is the rand function and the rand function will generate a random number for us. So let's see. We are going to use the rand function to generate a random number. And that random number we're going to call int x is equal to rand. And we're going to use a printf statement to print out this random number. So we're going to say random number new line. Let's do this, yes. So let's build and run and see what happens if we utilize the rand function. So the random number is 16807. And let's run this again. Oh, on the second time, what's the random number? 16807. So keep that number in mind. I'm going to stop the process again and I'm going to run the process again. What's the random number? 16807. Now, three times consecutively, consecutively, we get the same random number. Is that number random? I don't think so. So, this actually proves that a computer can't generate a random number from its own. Now the RAND function uses complex equations to generate that 16807. 
but it's still not random. That equation may generate a number that will look like something random, but they need needs a little bit extra input to make it actually a little bit more random. Still not completely random, but more human-like random. And that, what we need is a seed value. So we use the srand function to provide a seed value for the rand function to make it more random. So let's say we provide the number two as a seed value. We can run this and we get 33614. Okay, let's see now. Let's run it again and we see what's the number. 33614. This is still the same problem. We've provided now a input into the rand function so we have a seed value 2 but 2 doesn't change so 2 makes the rand func function still not random so what can we include as a seed to make the rand function more random what's the thing that will never ever be the same and will always be different in the near future and never ever repeat itself okay that is time time so we can include time as a seed and time will make this rand function more random or real random so we need to include Another library, time.h. Time.h is another library that will help us to actually get the time. So we can use time null. This will give us the time at this current moment. So now let's see. If we build and run, we get 53075. Let's just remember those first five numbers. Okay, 53075. 53098. So you can see now it actually changes and it's much more human like random. But it's still very big numbers. So now we have the problem. We've got random numbers. But it's not quite what we want. Let's say in the case where we want to ask the computer to generate a random number between 1 and 10. So now we're going to fall back to mathematics. How can we change that random number to a random number between 1 and 10? And it's actually quite easy. So let's quickly create a new empty file just to illustrate the point. So let's say we have 5 divided by 2. What's the answer? It's 2 remainder 1. What's 4 divided by 2? 2 remainder 0. What's 3 divided by 2? 1 remainder 1. And what's 2 divided by 2? It's 1 remainder 0. So you can see there's some sort of a repetition here, 0, 1, 0, 1, and it will continue. Let's quickly do a different example. Let's say 7, or let's make it 9, divided by 4. 9 divided by 4 will give you 2 remainder 
1. 8 divided by 2 gives you do remainder 0. 7 divided by 4 gives you do remainder 1 remainder, sorry, 1 remainder 3. 6 divided by 4 gives you 1 remainder 2. Then 5 divided by 4 gives you 1 remainder 1. Then 4 divided by 4 gives you 1 remainder 0. So now you can see there's a 3, 2, 1, 0. And this will repeat. So, let's quickly think. Remainder. If we look at remainder, by choosing what we are, are dividing with, we can generate a number between 0, 1, 2, and 3. If we choose to divide by 4, we get a number 0 to 4. So we can actually use the remainder and take the random number, divide it by a a certain value, take the remainder, and we know that that remainder will be in a certain range. And that remainder will be our random number. So, let's say for instance we go back to the example, we want a remainder or a random value between 1 and 10. So 1 and 10 is how many values? 1 to 10 is 10 values. So we will use remainder 10. So percentage sign is remainder. Okay, so remainder 10 gives us a random number of 10 values. It can be either one of those 10 values, but there's still a problem. Remainder will be from, if we go back, will be from 0 to 4 if we divide with 4. So if we divide by 10, it will give us 0 to 9. So this random number won't be a random number between 1 and 10. It will be a random number between 0 and 9. And that's not actually what we want. So how can we solve that problem? Quite easily, we say plus 1. And there we have it. Mathematics came to our rescue, and we have changed our random number that is generated with a seed, and that seed is time. So we generate that random number. We take the remainder of divide by 10, and that remainder, remainder plus 1 gives us a random number between 1 and 10. So let's quickly see this in real life. Random number 1. Okay, so let's repeat this again. 4. So the previous one was 1, now 4, and now we've got 6. So you see, this appears much more random than in the beginning, 5, and so forth. So this is how we will generate random number numbers using built-in libraries and functions by including new libraries, the standard library and the time library. We generate a random number by using a ran random seed value and that seed value is time because time will never change so it's a good seed value to use we generate that random number we use the remainder to get a boundary between 0 and 9 for instance by dividing with 10 or if we divide by 5 we will get 0 to 4 
and we shift this boundary up and down by adding one for instance for one to ten or we can make it minus one to eight this will be minus one to eight etc so this shifts the boundary up and down by addition or subtraction this gives us the total amount in the boundary and then we can just easily print it out thank you very much ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching and i hope to see you soon